consider the axe. Now, for any of you who are about to jump down into the comments and be like, well, technically that's a hatchet, not an axe. No, all hatchets are axes. Not all axes are hatchets, but all hatchets are axes. Axe is sort of like the category of the tool. And then within that category, broad axes, felling axes, blitting axes, hatchets, carving axes, hewing axes, mauls, so on. All variations of axes. So climb down off of your wolves, your goblins, and climb back into your caves with your pilfered gondolinian swords, you trolls. Yeah, that's right. That was a Tolkien joke. Just in case you didn't know what kind of man you were dealing with. And don't come at me. I've done my research. Anyway, back to axes. It looks like such a simple tool. And yet, this thing is the result of millions of years of trial and error. I mean, this tool is ancient, and I mean ancient. There are examples of a hafted axe, that's an axe with a handle, that date to 30,000 years ago. 30,000 years ago. That means when Nebuchadnezzar ascended the throne of Babylon, Khufu ordered the building of the pyramids. Petra began to be carved out of the rock before Mesa Verde. Machu Picchu, the Great Wall, Stonehenge. By the time of the earliest man-made monuments that we know of, this thing was already 20,000 years old. And that's just the hafted axe. There are examples of tools that would eventually become hand axes that are as old as 3 million years years. That's not just before Homo sapiens, it's before Homo erectus. It's before the genetic split that would create the genus Homo. This simple tool has literally evolved alongside humanity. We have used it as a weapon of war, as a hunting tool, to build houses, furniture, to cut trees down, and not this one. You'd be there for days, bigger ones. And even with all of the tools that we have at our disposal today, we still use this thing. And especially for people who haven't used one very often, we respect how much it can hurt us. Because even after thousands and millions of years of working with this tool, it can still hurt you more than anything else in a hand tool shop. Let's get into it. While we talk about why this is so dangerous, we are going to carve a spoon blank. It's going to be a good time. Now, most people, when they pick up one of these for the first time, they're a little intimidated by it. And that makes sense. I mean, just ask any morally loose teenager in a slasher flick and they will tell you exactly how much damage one of these can do. When you're at your chopping block, you actually want to be fairly close to it. If I stand way back here and I try to cut like this, I'm expending way more energy and I'm going to wind up throwing my back up. So I get up right next to it. Whichever hand is your dominant hand, your axing hand, you want that leg to be back because maybe this breaks out. Maybe you hit some weird grain. Maybe it just glances off. Hopefully the chopping block stops it. But if it doesn't, that axe is going to keep going right past it. And if you're standing square on and this thing misses, you've now got to make a very expensive trip to the hospital. You are going to be out of commission for a while and you're going to be down a perfectly good pair of work pants. Keeping your leg back keeps it out of the way so that if this glances, it's going to miss your leg. Now your inclination is going to be keep this straight up, bring this in at an angle. Don't do that. This, of course, is going to work on momentum. You got this straight up and down. You come in with this at an angle like this. One, this is not a really comfortable position for your body. So already you're adding weird strain onto your body. Second, let's say this does glance from here. Now you don't know where that axe is going to go because it's not going toward your chopping block anymore. It's going wherever it was going. And the momentum is just going to carry it straight through. You could hit your arm, you could hit your leg, you could hit your stomach. We have all seen what Gimli the Dwarf's axe will do to an orc, and you don't want any of that. Yeah, that's right. That's another Tolkien joke. First two are free, and so are all of the ones that come after the first two. Instead, you want to move your piece of work so that your axe can still come straight down. You're going to be able to keep your arm in more or less one position, which will make it easier to aim your axe. Now you can bring it down with extra force from those big muscles on your back without having to worry about your arm muscles throwing off your aim. 
gravity is helping me, and because I'm holding my axe further up, I don't need to worry about losing control of it so much. You don't really need to ever hold a hatchet back here. And if I'm gonna do really, really delicate cuts, I can hold it right behind the head. And then I can just basically use my wrist, make cuts that way. Great. You'll also notice I have never had my hand below where my ax is gonna hit. Don't bring your ax up higher than about here, about two thirds up your piece. If you start going beyond that, you are putting your other hand, your other arm in danger. In addition to that, whenever I am getting my ax up higher, I am never ever gonna have my fingers on the front like this. I am gonna have them around the side. In fact, the best thing to do is to keep them around the back as often as you possibly can. It's just gonna be better. Most of the time when people really actually get hurt with an ax, it's after they've been using it for long enough that they feel safe with it. You know, it's just like anything else. You think, I don't need to readjust my stance just to make this one little cut, I'll just make it. It's always been fine before. I don't need to sharpen it this time. Sure, it's a tiny bit dull, but I know how to work with that. I know I shouldn't pick this ax up above where my hand is, but there's no other way to get this cut, and I know what I'm doing. Those are usually the situations that result in you getting really hurt. None of this is to dissuade you from using this tool. It's a great tool, and it is meant to work with your body. It was designed to work with your body. This can be used safely as long as you're keeping all of those things in mind. So for next time you pick up an axe, remember how long this tool has been with humanity. And remember to be careful. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate every single like, every single view, every single comment, all of it. If you like what I'm doing and you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell button notification button thing. Leaving a comment is also a great way to show me support because it shows the algorithm that people like it, they're engaging with it, and they should show it to more people. Even just putting your initials, calling me a name, whatever, it helps me out. And of course, if you want to help even more, here are the names of all of my patrons, and you can see your name on this list by simply going to my Patreon and becoming a patron. It's that simple. In addition to seeing your name on this awesome list, you will also have my undying gratitude, along with, you know, some other perks and stuff over there. But whether you become a patron or whether you just watch this and enjoy it, I so appreciate you taking the time to give it a look. And of course, the only way I can keep making this stuff, making these videos, all of that, is because you are watching. So thank you so, so very much. And I will see you next time.